this video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on departmental accounts. I wish to solve one sum here before you on departmental accounts. Observe the sum on the screen. So this is a sum which I wish to explain. Mr. G, B and T carries on business as trappers and trailers in Jaipur. Partner G, B and T were in charge of department X, Y, Z. So G is in charge of department X, B is in charge of department Y and T is in the charge of department Z. The partners are entitled to a remuneration equal to 50% of the profit without taking the partner's remuneration to consideration of the respective department of which they are in charge and the balance of the profit are to be divided between GST in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 2. The following are the balances of revenue items in the books for the year ended on 31st of March 2017. This is the information is given to you. Opening stock for three departments, purchases for three departments, sales for three departments, closing stock of three departments. These are the common expenses. Prepare the departmental accounts for each of the three departments in a columnar form. Show the distribution of profit amongst the partners after, after taking into account the following. Goods have, goods have been transferred. Goods having a transfer price of 21,400 and 1,200 were transferred from X and Y respectively to department Z. Z is the receiver, X and Y are the giver and goods are transferred at the transfer price. The inter-department transfer is made at 125% of the cost. This is an inter-important point. When the goods are transferred from one department to another department, if the transfer has occurred at cost, then problem or issue of unrealized profit do not arise. But when the goods are transferred by one department to the another department at a profit one, and out of the transfer goods, the sum of the goods are unsold in the transferee department, then what happens? The goods that are left with the transferee department holds an element of profit which is earned, earned by the owner because all the department are being run under the common ownership and common roof. So unrealized profit calculation is an important point of this sum. The various items shall be apportioned amongst three departments in the following proportion. Rent 2 is to 2 is to 5. Salaries 1 is to 1 is to 1. Depreciation 1 is to 1 is to 1. Discount received 8 is to 5 is to 3. All other expenses on the basis of sales, excluding inter-department transfer on a department. So when you work out the sales ratio, excluding the inter-department transfer of each department, that's an important point. Opening stock of departments that does not include any goods transferred from the other department. So opening stock of goods of Z department 40,000 do not have any goods which has been received from X and Y. So there is no opening balance of stock reserve or unrealized profit in opening stock. Uh, the opening stock of department Z does not include any goods transferred from other departments, but the closing stock includes 17,100 valued at the inter-department transfer price. So on this 17,100, we are required to find out the unrealized profit at the end of the sum. Now let me start preparation, preparing columnar trading and profit and loss account for three departments X, Y and Z. So this is the initial details of the sum. These are the Proportion in which expenses need to be distributed. Let me start with it. This is my column by trading and profit and loss account for three department X, Y and Z. I start with opening stock. This opening stock X, Y, Z will be recorded in the debit side of trading account. So opening stock 75,780 for department X, 48,000 for department Y, 40,000 for department Z. Purchases will be debited to the trading account. So let me write down on the trading account purchases 2,81,400, 1,61,200 and for Z it is 88,800. Now sales that I am going to write down on the credit side of my trading account. That's for X. 
फाइव टू सेवन डी जेड वन एटी क्लोजिंग स्टॉक एक्स वाई एंड जेड नाउ दिस सैलरीज एंड वेजिस एटसेट्रा आर टू बी ट्रांसफर्ड सैलरी इन वेजिस नाइन्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड इन विच प्रपोर्शन इट इज टू बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इक्वल प्रपोर्शन सो नाइन्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इक्वली सो नाइन्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड इंटू वन थर्ड थर्टी टू थाउजेंड इज द एक्सपेंस फॉर एक्स सेम वे फॉर वाई सेम वे फॉर जेड सो नाइन्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इक्वली थर्टी टू थाउजेंड थर्टी टू थाउजेंड थर्टी टू थाउजेंड ईच फॉर थ्री डिपार्टमेंट एडवर्टाइज रेंट टू इज टू टू इज टू फाइव सो ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द रेशियो टू इज टू टू इज टू फाइव सो ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड इन टू टू अपॉन नाइन फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड फॉर डिपार्टमेंट एक्स ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड इंटू टू बाई नाइन वन सेकेंड फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड फॉर डिपार्टमेंट वाई एंड फाइव बाई नाइन दैट वर्क आउट टू बी ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड दैट इज टू बी रेकॉर्डेड फॉर डिपार्टमेंट जेड Now, after distributing rent in this fashion, next expense that I intend to distribute depreciation on furniture and fittings. It is in the ratio of one is to one is to one. So, here depreciation is required to be debited to the trading and profit and loss account. Fifteen hundred equally distributed one third each. Five hundred, five hundred for Z also. This is how depreciation is recorded. Now, next discount received. Discount received is to be distributed in the ratio of eight is to five is to three. So sixteen hundred eight by sixteen because eight plus five thirteen plus three sixteen eight by sixteen eight hundred discount received is an income. So it is credited to profit and loss account five by sixteen. So five hundred three by sixteen. Notice the change that I made three by sixteen, so it will be three hundred. So three hundred will be recorded in department Z. Now all other expenses on the basis of sales, but when you work out the sales, it should be considered other than the transfers that I have read specifically. So ratio of sales thirty six is to twenty seven is to eighteen. If you divide all these numbers by nine, nine fours are thirty six. Nine threes are twenty-seven. Nine twos are eighteen. So four is to three is to two is the ratio in which the other expenses are required to be distributed. Advertisement. So four thousand five hundred distributed in the ratio of sales. So four plus three seven plus two four by nine. Nine fives are forty-five. Five fours are twenty. Two thousand. Now four thousand five hundred into. Look at the change that I made. Three by nine. So three by nine fives are, and five threes are fifteen. So fifteen for buy. Similarly, two by nine. See, I change here. Four thousand five hundred into two by nine. Nine fives are five twos are one thousand. One thousand is for that. This is how distribution takes place. You can work out calcul. You can work out based on calculator very comfortably. Now discount allowed. Same way sales ratio. So two thousand seven hundred into four by nine. Two thousand seven hundred into three by nine. Two thousand seven hundred into two by nine. So this is the expense to be debited to profit and loss account. Twelve hundred, nine hundred for buy, six hundred for sell. Sunday expenses in the sales proportion. Twenty four thousand three hundred into four by nine. Twenty four thousand three hundred into three by nine. So one third, eight thousand one hundred for buy, and one by nine, two by nine. I'm sorry, five thousand four hundred. So. This expense is to be debited to profit and loss account. Sunday expenses. So this is how distribution took place. Now, goods having a transfer value of twenty one thousand four hundred and one thousand two hundred were transferred from department X and Y respectively. So X and Y transfers to Z. Z is the receiver. Debit the receiver. Credit the giver. But here the goods are transferred from X and Y to Z. The departments are identified as an in separate accounting entity. So for this transfer, we record debit the receiver and credit the giver. 
but in real substance the ownership has not changed at all because the owner of this x department y department and z department is the same entity so legal ownership of x y and z is under the same name under the same title so there is no real transfer of ownership legal ownership do not transfer when the goods are transferred from one department to another department but the interdepartmental transfers are recorded from the accounting entity point of view where in debit the receiver and credit the giver rule is being followed but the extent to which the goods are unsold left in the transferee department for that you are required to create a stock reserve for unrealized profit in the closing stock which is unsold and which has been transferred from the another department under the common ownership so here 21412000 1200 are transferred by x and y to z z is the receiver debit the receiver and credit the giver so x department credit y department credit and receiver is total of these two is received by z so z account is to be debited so this is how debit the receiver and credit the receiver credit the giver rule is to be followed from the accounting entity point of view but from legal ownership point of view there is no transfer in substance so this is how debit the receiver credit the giver rule is being applied now let me find out the gross profit total of credit minus total of debit so here 4 lakh 71560 3 lakh 6160 2 lakh 23180 that is recorded now i find the gross profit so 4 lakh 71560 minus 75780 and 2 lakh 81400 so you will get the gross profit same way you will get the gross profit for y 3 lakh 6160 minus 48000 minus 1 lakh 61200 96960 same way you can find out the gross profit for department z that works out to be 71780 this gross profit gets transferred to the credit side of profit and loss account. So all this gross profit is transferred to the credit side of profit and loss account. Now I want to find out the net profit. So total of credit minus total of debit. So here you will get the net profit, 1 like 15,180 minus all these expenses, you will get the net profit. So you can work out with calculator, 63,880 is the net profit. Here 49,660 is the net profit. This is the net profit. Now this net profit is profit of department X, department Y and department Z. All the profits come under the common ownership. So general profit and loss account is to be prepared where these profits will be transferred. So all these profits are transferred to the credit side of general profit and loss account or profit and loss appropriation account because this profit of department is required to be distributed amongst partners as agreed 50 percent profit is to be given to each partner to, with their manage and the remaining 50 percent is to be distributed under the common pool so this is how the profit is credited now the partners are entitled to a remuneration of 50 percent of the profit without making partners remuneration into consideration the respective department of which they are in charge of so x y and z are the departments all the three partners are in the charge of three department individual departments so in light of that profit of x 63880 50% will go to g because g is managing department x so 50% profit is given to g y department is being managed by b so g b B will get 49,660 into 50%. This is the profit that will go to B. And last part of T, who is the administering department Z, the profit 20,580, 50% of that will go to T. So this is how 50% profit distribution took place. Now I am required to work out the stock reserve. So stock reserve is an unrealized profit. So from this from this profit, unrealized profit will be taken away, will be deducted. So you will get the net profit available for distribution. Out of this net profit, this 50% is distributed as per departmental profit. But the remaining profit is to be distributed. The, under the common pool profit will be distributed in the ratio of 5 to 3 is to 2. 
But before distributing in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 2, you should make a provision for unrealized profit. So let me work out the unrealized profit. Now, opening stock do not have any unrealized profit. Closing stock includes 17,100 valued at interdepartmental transfer price. And the interdepartmental transfer price is made 125% on cost. So 125% of the cost is the rate at which the transfers has taken place. And out of the transfer goods, 17,100 17, is the goods left unsold with department Z, which holds the unrealized profit. So department Z is a receiver. So stock received from X and y, the goods received from X and Y by Z out of that 71,100 is the unsold item. In that, how much is the unrealized profit that I want to work out? Very important, but let me prepare working note for that. I want to calculate stock reserve here. Interdepartmental transfer are made 125% of the cost. So transfer price is equal to cost multiplied by 125%. So cost multiplied by 125% is equal to transfer price or sales price, transfer price or sales price. This 17,100 is a transfer price, not the cost, remember it. So 17,100 valued at the interdepartmental transfer price. So 17,100 is a transfer price or sales price. So if I want to find out the cost, let me make cost as the subject of equation. So cost is equal to sales price or transfer price multiplied by 125 upon 100 will be reversed. So 100 upon 125 sales price into 100 upon 125. This is how cost is made the subject of equation. Now I want to find out the cost of this 17,100. So 17,100 transfer price or sales price multiplied by 100 upon 125. So this is the cost. So 13,680 is the cost of these goods. Sales price or transfer price minus cost is equal to profit unrealized. So transfer price 17,100 minus cost price. So this is the unrealized profit. This unrealized profit is debited against this profit. Credited to profit and loss account. So unrealized profit entries, general profit and loss account or profit and loss appropriation account debit to stock reserve account credit. So this stock reserve balance unrealized profit will be carried forward in the next year. And here the stock reserve is created by debiting to profit and loss appropriation account. This is how stock reserve working note is prepared and stock reserve is created by debiting profit and loss appropriation account. Now I want to find out the balance profit. So total of credit side minus stock reserve and 50% already distributed. So this is the balance profit that will be distributed there. Under the common pool, that ratio is already given to you, 5 to 3 to 2. So this profit will be distributed in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 2. So 63,680 into 5 by 10. 63,640 into 3 by 10. That's a B. And 63,640 into 2 by 10. This is the profit to be given to T. This is how profit distribution is being explained. The most important point of this sum is the stock reserve that I have created and the common profit to be distributed in the ratio of 5 to 3 to 2 is to be worked out after deducting the stock reserve and 50% departmental distributed profit. So this is how the balance profit is worked out, distributed amongst partner as agreed. This is how I have tried to explain you this sum. Here I have prepared Columbus Departmental Trading and Profit and Loss Account and Common Profit and Loss Appropriation Account for profit distribution amongst partners. The most important point is the creation of stock reserve note that I have tried to explain you. I feel that you followed all these things. Thanks to all.